I had the chance to sit down and play with the new animation features in the upcoming Procreate 5, and they aren't really breaking any new ground, but man, are they fun to use. I'm going to be walking through how to put this animation together using the new Procreate 5 animation features. Procreate 5 is still in beta. You need an invite in order to get in. They haven't announced a release date for it, but I've been using it for about a week. It is really solid. I haven't run into any bugs or crashes. All the features seem to be in there. I wouldn't be surprised if it releases pretty soon. Now, if you have already purchased my Procreate Masterclass over on Udemy, I'm going to be updating that class for Procreate 5 in the near future, so stay tuned for that. That update will be free for you if you've already purchased it. If you haven't, go to brad.site slash learn, get a discount code to that course. Anyway, on to the tutorial. Currently in Procreate, every layer that you have becomes a frame in your animation. In order to preview it, you have to go to the wrench and you have to go down to Animate MP4, one, other, one of the other video export features. The new tools make this much, much better. There is an animation assist down here. What it is basically is a timeline where you can hit play, see everything play out in front of you. This plus button will add a frame so you can keep drawing on that new frame, and this gear icon brings up all the options you'd expect in a basic animation tool. I can adjust the frames per second. I can adjust how many onion skin frames I see. If you're wondering, what is onion skinning? That means you can see the frame before and the frame after the frame you're on. So if I move that up, you can see the preview frames underneath it. And of course, you can always adjust the opacity of that onion skinning if you'd like to see it a little darker or the opacity of those frames a little lighter. Another thing worth noting is different playback features. There's one shot, so you hit play and it moves once. Next up we have loops, so when you hit play, it's going to get to the end, go back to the beginning, and play again. And then there is the ping pong feature, which is the one we're going to be using today, which is when you hit play, it goes to the end, and then it just goes backwards, and it keeps going back and forth, like a ping pong ball. Another feature worth mentioning here is the ability to add backgrounds and foregrounds. Your top layer could become your foreground layer, so if I create a new layer, go in here with my pen, and draw whatever I want, I can then go in and set that top layer to my foreground layer. So whenever I hit play, that animation will play below the foreground. You can take your bottom layer, draw whatever you want, and turn that into a background layer and your animation will play over that background. Easy peasy. Okay, so to start, we're gonna be creating a character using just basic shapes. And to do that, let's talk about a couple animation principles that are gonna help us out. I have animated this goat to move from one side of the screen to the other. Every frame, the goat moves the same distance. This is boring. Even the goat thinks so. <laughs> to add some excitement, we're going to use an animation principle called slow in, slow out. Or easing. The goat moves less at the beginning and the end of the animation cycle, giving the animation a smoother, less mechanical feel. That's a good goat. All right, great tip. Next, we're going to- I wasn't done yet. There are yet two principles to cover. The first is anticipation. Before we move something, we can build anticipation for that movement by pulling the goat back before shooting him forward at a high rate of speed we create anticipation for the action that is about to occur <laughs> To accentuate the actions, we use a principle called squash and stretch. When we pull the goat backwards, we condense its width. When we fire it forward, it gets wider and narrower. The results are astounding. Okay, we're done with the school part. Let's get on to the actual animation process. Now, how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start with a sketch and I'm going to be sketching out the pieces, parts that I want. So first and foremost, I'm probably going to put my foreground in. So I'm just going to rough in like a little laser tool thing shooting down. And down here, we're gonna have like some kind of assembly line with, with products rolling up on that. So I'm just gonna sketch in those kind of foreground elements right now. And then in the background, I'll probably have some silhouette -y type things to kind of accentuate it, but not draw too much attention to. Next on its own layer, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer and I'm going to put my character directly on that layer. So I'm gonna start just by kind of blocking him in. He's gonna be a block. He's gonna have a big round head. And what he's gonna be doing through this animation is he's going to be anticipating down, kind of squeezing down and then reaching up really fast to grab the tool. And then a, like a little bolt of laser will come down and engrave the thing down below. And then it's gonna ping pong. So that animation of him going up, I only have to draw that once. And then it's gonna hit the end of that animation and he's just gonna shrink back down automatically. 
So now that I have my basic shapes in, uh, I'm gonna clean this up quite a bit because I wanna use some pretty clean lines even though this is a sketch. Also gonna put on a glove so my hand doesn't stick to my iPad. All right, there we go. Gonna draw in that head, going to draw in that body and probably get some of uh, his arms in there. Just to start, I'm gonna just kinda sketch in his eyes. Maybe his eyes are down below cause they're kinda looking down at the product there, give him a little nose and some eyebrows and some ears as well. So that is my frame one. I'm gonna get rid of my, my original sketch and now I'm gonna use these new tools to build out this animation. So first up, I'm gonna set this as an actual foreground. So I'm gonna tap on the layer, I'm gonna say animation foreground so it knows the foreground. I'm gonna go back to layer three and I'm gonna tap on this, create new layer. And you see my initial layer got kind of gray there. That's because the onion skinning is in effect. If I wanna change that opacity, I can go and slide it in there. And now on this new frame, all I have to do is go in and draw that head again. And this time we're gonna be doing that anticipation thing. So maybe the body is just kind of uh, stretching, just kind of pushing down a little bit. The arms are going down a little bit. I might even grab my selection tool and move his head down a little bit here, just to, just to start to get that anticipation going. Tap on new frame, and basically I'm gonna run through all of these, and I'll be back in a second. Alright, so we have the anticipation set up. Let's hit play and let's see how that's looking. Now obviously the sketch is kind of rough, but that's okay. You get the idea that he's kind of going down and, and obviously it's ping-ponging back and forth, so it just looks like he's panting. But the next step is to do that quick up movement to the tool. I'm a little nervous because I did this quickly on camera, but I'm gonna hit play and we're gonna see what happens. So play, reaches up, cool. So yeah, for the most part, this is pretty much exactly what I was going for, it worked. But right now, this is just a proof of concept. It's a sketch. One of the cool things about Procreate is you get all those brushes and all those amazing finished art tools. So we can take those finishing tools and apply them to this animation right here. So it's not just every layer in Procreate that becomes a frame in your animation. It's also every group. So if you have multiple layers that you want to make up one frame, if you put them in a group, there you go. That's what we're gonna do next, is we're gonna clean this up. We're gonna take it from a sketched to a finished, painterly looking illustration. And in order to do that, instead of animating frame by frame, we're gonna animate group by group. Inside each group is gonna be a couple layers. There's going to be the shape of the head, so I don't have to redraw the head as it goes up. I could just modify it. The shape of the body, which again, I don't wanna redraw. I'm just gonna paint it once and stretch it as I go and resize it. And then lastly, there's probably gonna be the facial features because I'm gonna be changing those around a little bit. So with that, I'm gonna start painting and we're gonna speed through this and I'll see you in a minute. So this is gonna be the core of our animation, as you can see here, it's looping pretty well. Another thing that I did is at the top of that pose, in the layers, I duplicated the group twice so that he would pause at the top and at the very bottom, I also duplicated two layers there or two groups there so that they'd pause at the bottom. We're almost at the end here. The last thing I wanna do is I wanna add in my foreground. I wanna add in my background. I already have these painted out and I've painted them out as layers, but I've included them in a group. And so that way, all I need to do is set that group as my foreground and set that group as my background. And then when I play 
my animation with everything added. It looks complete. It looks good. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. So if you guys have any comments or questions, let me know down below in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in a couple of days. Thank you.